Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start our session for today. Uh, your Excellencies, distinguished guests, innovators and advocates to the Zero Project Conference. I'm Rana Matar, the head of the Learning Center at King's Academy in Jordan. I'm going to describe myself. I'm a white lady with uh, with uh, shoulder uh, length hair, wearing black pants and uh, black and white blazer. Welcome to the integration strategies for mainstream schools and youth services session. Today, we embark on a transformative journey towards inclusivity and accessibility for all. As we gather here, united in our commitment to eliminate barriers and foster empowerment. Let us embrace the diversity of perspectives and experiences that enrich our collective vision. Inclusion enriches the lives of individuals, promoting a sense of belonging and well-being that is essential for personal growth. The importance of inclusion lies in its ability to create a world where everyone has the opportunity to thrive, irrespective of differences and where unity is celebrated alongside diversity. Research has shown that inclusive education can lead to better academic outcomes for all students. When students with diverse abilities learn together in the same classroom, they benefit from collaboration, peer support, and exposure to different learning styles. Inclusive classrooms often utilize differentiated instruction and universal design for learning principles, which cater to the diverse needs of learners and enhance overall learning outcome. Inclusive education prepares students for life uh, in a diverse and globalized society. In today's interconnected world, the ability to work with people from diverse backgrounds is a crucial skill. Inclusive classrooms provide students with the culture competency and social skills needed to thrive in an increasingly diverse workplace and community. With shared purpose and unwavering dedication, let us ignite conversations and catalyze change that echo far beyond these walls. Welcome to the Zero Project Conference, where together we dare to dream of a future without limits. Before we begin, I'd like to express our gratitude to Zero Project for making this event possible. Let's give them a round of applause. The purpose of this session is to present six awardees projects. We have a diverse set of speakers who will be sharing their expertise on inclusion. And I'm confident that it will be an enlightening experience for all of us. Our speakers today will guide us to explore methods of working on vocational inclusion, modular teacher training, integrated classroom support, after school support, and community-driven accessibility measures. Among others, Zero Project awardees will delve into proven solutions that have successfully combined pedagogical and psychological support services in inclusive classrooms. Allow me to introduce our esteemed speakers for today's event. Sam Nang Fan, Disability Development Services for Program from Cambodia. Santi, Research Center for uh, Inclusion from Vietnam, and Ross Spranger, Lilian Foundation from Netherlands. Susanna, NGO Bridge of Hope from Armenia. Elizabeth and Martin, uh, Unger Gasse from Austria. <laughs> Uh, Victor Institute, Yo Clemente from Brazil. Uh, Mauricio uh, and Carmen Adisa and CBM's Inclusive Education Program from Guatemala. Uh, 
let's start with some fun. Samna fun. Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Samnang Pang I'm from uh, Cambodia, from Disability Development Services Program. Uh, I can describe myself. I dye my hair black, uh, uh, black. <laughs> because I'm uh, 50, uh, early 50. So that I make myself uh, young, so I have to dye my uh, hair black. Thank you. With uh, black uh, shoes and black uh, shoes as well. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for this great beautiful uh, opportunity to present to share our work from uh, uh, Cambodia. And uh, we can save one of the NGO in Cambodia to represent our uh, 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 country as well. So our work um, is to share with you on integration uh, strategy for mainstreaming schools and usability. And before starting, I would like to, yeah, okay. Next slide, please. And here is some, some uh, uh, contents that I'm going to uh, share with you. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Next slide. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Just a few key points of our work uh, that we have done uh, with our work in uh, Cambodia. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> DDSV is one of the organizations that uh, work for persons with disability in Cambodia after Handicap International withdraw from uh, uh, our province in uh, 2003. So we started this to respond to uh, the needs of persons with disability in, in our provinces. <clears throat> we currently work in uh, provinces, uh, two, uh, in two provinces uh, of Cambodia, Batambong and uh, Posat province, and we cover 52 communes and uh, 523 villages. Total population of uh, our beneficiary is uh, 5,500 5, something, and uh, including 2,880 uh, children, including children with disability. Thank you. The goals of this is uh, to promote welfare for uh, of persons with disability uh, through empowering and strengthening partnership with relevant stakeholders. Thank you. Uh, yes, this is uh, what we are doing uh, in order to integrate the strategy for mental health school and usability. We have uh, several activities to uh, support children to go to school. One other project is Mutkuma uh, Pika, that means uh, friends of uh, children with disability. So uh, we have uh, improved the accessibility uh, through building RAM at school, uh, playground at school, uh, pathway so that children with disability can play together with other non-disabled one to in, to to increase sorry to to reduce the discrimination uh, towards children with disability and we also build uh, uh, accessibility at the public uh, hall as well public uh, building as well like uh, uh, health center and commune hall. The DSP also build the capacity building of uh, local teachers and local authority such as commune council and district councils on inclusive, what is inclusive education, what is, uh, how to identify uh, uh, disabilities, how to identify children or persons with disability and class management, um, inclusive development, communication and, and advocacy. <clears throat> Teaching material uh, creation also uh, uh, teaches to, to local teachers and local authority as well. We also uh, conducted uh, our ordinary things on uh, disability inclusion, the rights of children with disability, the rights of persons with disability, to promote the participation of uh, persons with disability in the working place. Uh, children also support to go to school by referring for physical and, and health rehabilitation, uh, school, school scholarship, Scholarship also provided to children who need it, especially children with disability to go to school, uh, especially to go to school. <clears throat> and 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 uh, artisan device, like wheelchairs or reading glasses or crutches, also provided uh, to those who are needed for accessing school. We also uh, never forget to support the parents so that they can encourage their children to go to school by counseling them. Yep, and provide them uh, a grant or loan 
for income generation activity so that they can uh, uh, support their children to go to school. Thank you. Here are the pictures, uh, the pictures on the right, uh, right hand side, the first is a uh, photo of uh, uh, capacity building to local teachers and local authority. And uh, 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 the last photo of uh, the slide, also the photo of activity, uh, which we provide uh, learning material or scholarship for children uh, with disability and other children uh, that are out of school. Yep. Thank you. And this slide, please. And some other photo. Oh, sorry. It's, uh, and integration. Uh, another part of the project is integrated classes that we mainly focus on children with intellectual disability. And <clears throat> we provide teachers uh, and local authority on, on we have here uh, management, stress management, physiotherapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy so that they can uh, support their children in their school. Yep. Thank you. The pictures is some activity of, uh, of, uh, of the activity that uh, we uh, provided to our integrated class of children with intellectual disability. And photo of uh, our activity. Um, we also do outreach activity to children who could not access education as well. So uh, should we teaching uh, student, uh, by students, a teacher by one student at uh, their home base for, for who cannot come to access uh, the school. Thank you. And, 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 and also, uh, sorry, another photo is uh, the school campaign. You can see the, yeah, sorry, back please. The school campaign is uh, we, we uh, conducted for, 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 for collecting children, our school children to access education. And uh, every year our sponsor support uh, 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 bicycle for transportation for the children who could not afford uh, to get a bike to go to uh, education. Um, this is the second, uh, the second uh, project that we uh, support our, uh, <coughs> our children to go to school. This is linked to uh, the first uh, activity uh, we call uh, Inclusive Ebu uh, Education Training Center, Inclusive Vocational Training Center. We, yeah, the purpose of this, it provides the skill and knowledge to use with disability and the use of person with disability on skills such as motor repair, solving English classes, computer classes, and plastic recycle. Okay. Next, please. Um, some photo of uh, other uh, of activity of sewing machine and uh, motor repair and uh, uh, yeah, uh, sewing, so, sewing lesson and motor repair. That's the pictures only. Thank you. So, uh, please uh, go to the next slide, please. Uh, this is other uh, a photo of the uh, English classes and the computer classes that we support uh, at our uh, inclusive uh, vocational training center. Next slide, please. And plus, I think I call it the post post of this one is promote the clean environment and providing job opportunity for youth with disability and the use for person with disability from uh, the very poor uh, family to have a job as well. And we uh, also promote uh, uh, income resources mobilization for support ourselves. Thank you. The process is we uh, announcing for uh, plastic uh, management and plastic impact of plastic. And we also uh, uh, collect uh, and classify plastic and processes. And uh, this is the final product. Uh, yeah, the final product of uh, the plastic recycle. We will use uh, uh, rulers for for the school boy and school girls who could not buy uh, learning material. So we will use and then we provide to the school. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. And this is other projects that link to uh, how we mainstream our activity. We form a self-help group of person with DVT. The main purpose is so that they can support each other and uh, link with uh, the mainstreaming is support their children to go to school. Yeah, okay. And also other activity as well. We uh, support the spinal cord injury. And, and uh, yeah, I support, uh, please, on this slide. Yeah, this is the photo of uh, uh, CBR or CPIT activity. And next slide, please. 
And this is the 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 the, the activity uh, of uh, communication and advocacy for change. So we have the representative from every village, from uh, every commune on uh, inclusive education and on uh, disability. So they encourage their children to go to school uh, by advocate and communicate with the local authorities to support children to go to school. Uh, yes, we also have uh, some activity related to climate change adaptation, and we have uh, uh, accessible uh, garden uh, gardening to uh, resilient with uh, the, the the climate change as well. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam, for this uh, amazing project. You presented uh, a variety of activities that your organization is working on. Uh, what grasped my attention is uh, you started with Friend of Children with Disability, which I think this is a very important component. If we want to have a project to support people with disabilities, we should show them love and care. So this is the start, I think, with any service we have to uh, provide people with disabilities. Uh, let's move to, uh, to our another uh, uh, project, uh, which is Research Center for Inclusion from Vietnam. We have uh, Than and Ross. Um, yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you a lot for the organizer from Zero Project for inviting us to have this opportunity to share with you all our project in Vietnam. Uh, our presenter today have myself, uh, Thuy, from Vietnam and our colleague from uh, Lillian Fonds, uh, Ms. Rose. And uh, our presentation uh, can be um, short because we will have a video at the end so we can uh, uh, show you uh, later. So uh, let me start with um, our presentation. I don't have a much uh, picture in my presentation because later you will see uh, a lot of our activity in the video. So um, uh, let me introduce a bit about myself. Uh, uh, I'm uh, from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, and uh, uh, I'm 47. So I hope uh, I look like 47 years old and I have black hair with a medium height. And uh, my colleague, you, you want to introduce yeah. yourself? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Rose Palmers. Um, I'm a special needs teacher and inclusive education advisor to the Liliana Fonds uh, in the Netherlands. We are a non-profit organization dedicated to improving the lives of children and youngsters with disabilities in low and middle income countries. We work in 25 countries in partnership with local organizations to provide access to quality healthcare education, livelihoods, and social support. And we are trying to improve the systems through advocacy. Today, we are here to present our innovative, impactful, inclusive education approach in Vietnam. And we're looking for support to scale this solution nationally and beyond. I welcome you to reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. So uh, let me start with the, uh, the presentation, please. Next slide. Uh, so about the organization where I am from, a research center for inclusion, or we call RCI. RCI is formerly a Dutch organization, uh, Netherlands Laboratory Relief. Uh, and uh, currently, RCI focus on all our intervention focus on disability, children, adults, and um, young people with disability, including those who are affected by leprosy. Uh, that's our uh, history experience. And uh, RCI work on various kinds of fields on persons with disability, including inclusive education about uh, sexual reproductive health, uh, uh, rehabilitation and healthcare and research, uh, but usually we uh, we do not conduct uh, academic research. It's more about action research, and we train young people with disability to conduct action research that then will facilitate their role as uh, advocate. Yeah. Next, please. And. Um, 
The project I'm going to introduce with you is funded by the Lalian Fund as introduced by our colleague uh, Rose earlier. The project implemented in the two provinces in the center of Vietnam. And for your information, the center of Vietnam is heavily affected by the war in the past. Uh, then, and um, it's, it's also heavily affected by uh, by the weather, uh, hot weather, flooding weather. So the situation, they're very poor. So the project, any project, they're very helpful for children and their family. And um, uh, here people face a problem that the children usually drop out of school because uh, the family um, uh, situation that cannot accommodate for their schooling. And at the same time, the, the teacher is like a, a capacity building to teach children. Next, please. Next slide, please. Yes. And um, how this project is uh, helped for uh, for children, we uh, we work with the two provinces and we work with mainstream school to establish the uh, support unit for inclusive education in a 16 school in in our project site, and we also work with um, a special school to support the deaf, which train the sign language teacher on how to teach uh, the deaf children so uh, i mean uh, we uh, we cover um uh, with uh, we train the teacher who teach all type of disability including sign language teachers yeah next please uh so uh, we are asked what is our uh, innovative uh, aspect and we think that um, our innovative and also the impact that the project included is focused on the um, the flashcards, uh, how we call the flashcards. Um, the, this is kind of material uh, for to uh, to guide teacher to teach children with disability on the skill and knowledge. But however, easily the menu are quite uh, lengthy and it may take time for the teacher to look at it. So we developed the um, the material in flashcards, which is very a lot of picture with keyword. And of course we have the, uh, the, the original form. So we already have flashcards and, and in this opportunity, we're looking for the opportunity where we, uh, we can be supported to try transform our flashcard into an app for other province or other teacher who do not belong to our project, they can also use it. And um, uh, we also train the teacher to become the, the coach, like who are trained, we become core trainer, and the core trainer are trained again to at intensive and advanced level, so they become coach and peer support for um, other teacher. Uh, next, please. Uh, so in this project, uh, we work with different um, stakeholder and uh, including Ministry of Education and under Ministry of Education, they have a National Center for Special Education where they provide technical support uh, to those who work on inclusive education. And we also in Vietnam, we also uh, in, in different province, they also have what they call inclusive education center. Uh, that that the, the teacher they're also very uh, good. So um, since I have only three minutes, uh, next slide please, so that we can show our uh, video. Please, please help to show our video, I think at, uh, yes, this one.
So uh, that's it all about our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, your question. I warmly welcome to uh, Ms. Rowe and myself. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Tanya. Uh, the most important thing is, as you mentioned, quality and advocacy to help people with uh, disability. So thank you so much for presenting your project. Uh, we're going to move now to Susanna, uh, Bridge of Hope from Armenia. And for sure, uh, to reach our goals, we need to have hope regardless of the time that we reach our hope. So the floor is yours, Susanna. Thank you. And in order to have a hope, we have to build bridges to go uh, to realize our hopes. That's why we are called Bridge of Hope. Thank you very much. I'm Susanna Tadevosian. I'm president of NGO Bridge of Hope, uh, an NGO with very long, long term of experience towards the rights of people with disabilities in Armenia, established in 1996. And from the very beginning, our approach to a disability issue was based on human rights rather than to uh, rehabilitation, etc. And um, Bridge of Hope is the organization that started its pilot towards inclusive education two decades ago in cooperation with the Ministry of Education and with valuable support of Danish government through its uh, partner organization, Danish organization Mission East. We started our pilot in the country from school to school then uh, uh, after 10 years of the success of the pilot and lessons learned and mistakes that we had and uh, created our uh, corrected our mistakes and based on this already we uh, advocated for leg inclusive um, uh, legislation which is called comprehensive in universal inclusive system of education in Armenia now applied in all mainstream schools in Armenia and as a result of this big advocacy work uh, with huge efforts of Bridge of Hope organization. Special schools in my country have been transformed into pedagogical psychological support services to inclusive education. And now we can say that the number of special schools is uh, only five in the country and the rest uh, have opened their doors for children with uh, disabilities. And now our main issue is how to support uh, the inclusion and participation, access to curriculum, for the child already involved in mainstream education system. Next slide, please. So next slide, please. Next, please. Okay. Uh, and after the adoption of legislation, uh, a big issue, of course, was its financial sustainability. And already from 2017, the Ministry of Education um, uh, took care about, uh, of sustainability of its services, those services that are delegated to civil society organizations, because most of spe special schools that have been uh, transformed into pedagogical psychological support services have remained as state institutions with new uh, uh, mandatory procedures providing support. And uh, so, and one of these uh, civil society organizations was Bridge of Hope, working in one of um, provinces in the country, in Tabush Mars, where uh, the Mars that was the first Mars where all these procedures have been piloted, and now it is supported uh, by the Ministry of Education. And the, our main uh, purpose now is to create um, access to mainstream education curricula to children in uh, education so that they can achieve measurable learning outcomes. This is the most difficult thing that we do. And our support is uh, both at school level and at uh, center-based level after school program, how we call it. At school, we support our major support goes to teachers because the teachers are backbone of inclusion. So we have to support if we want to really support inclusion of the child in education. So to uh, succeed in education, we have to support, first of all, and empower the teachers. That's why we support teachers in many aspects, uh, in IP development, evaluation, implementation, 
uh, we assess the progress, uh, the level of participation and the progress that the child has made in inclusive classrooms. So to uh, understand what else and how else to support the teachers to improve child's participation and inclusion within the uh, mainstream education environment. So attitude is the key. So we always, always work to change the mindset because our mindset is the main barrier to understand whether disability is an illness that needs to be treated or it, it's a human right that should be supported to be realized. So next slide, please. OK. <laughs> so uh, our achievement uh, for all, the whole country, of course, is that all 1,400 schools are now um, realizing in, uh, education that is based on inclusive principles. Actually, the system already is inclusive. At uh, province level, our achievement is that all children that, uh, with disabilities in the province are enrolled in education system, that all teachers are regularly trained in different aspects of inclusive, uh, inclusive education to, uh, so to better support inclusion of the child, and of course families, because one of the uh, most valuable stakeholders uh, towards inclusive education are parents. And many, many difficulties are also related with parents because parents' dream is to see their child being cured. And when you speak about education, it's something difficult. So that's why parents' participation is very important. They should, be, should have meaningful participation. For this purpose, they should be empowered, trained. This is what we do uh, uh, in our country. And policy influence. This uh, I already told in, um, uh, during previous uh, uh, slides that policy influence is the key to uh, enhance sustainability. We are grateful to those who supported us from uh, different inter international organizations, but the main ownership should be the government's own ownership. For this purpose, advocacy is very important. And in, in the country, already universal inclusive uh, system of education is applied to both levels, primary, preschool education and secondary education levels. Um, and this is due to, again, Bridge of Hope, long, long term um, uh, of uh, cooperation with all partners. And this is uh, these are the factors of our success. Partnership is very important. It's partnership with the government, partnership with international community, partnership with civil societies, and which is very most important, partnership with families and children. So uh, another is a tailored support services because every child is an individual and your support should be very much individualist, individualized and uh, uh, on the child's potential and capacities, not deficits. And uh, in parent empowerment, as far as organization has been uh, established by parents' uh, efforts, so it continues to be central and uh, it, it is one of uh, other uh, success factors of the organization. And attitude change is always there. We have, it's the major and the most uh, difficult thing to do to change mindset. And for this, we are doing uh, a lot of awareness raising and advocacy work in our country. Um, Financing and sustainability, I already told that many, many international organizations have supported our uh, uh, programs towards inclusive education. And already from 2017, the funding comes from the Ministry of Education, and which has created basis for the sustainability of the support services. Uh, very often we speak about a social model that speaks mainly about uh, 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 accessibility environment, etc. And a human rights based approach is some uh, an, uh, is addition to social model of disability focusing on the support because if you really want a person to realize its basic human rights we have to support if the person needs this support challenges the biggest challenge there are a lot of challenges in one presentation we want to appraise uh, our projects but we know that there are a lot of challenges and maybe maybe 80% of challenges proceeds from our mindsets 
So, and this is a very big challenge that we work and innovative aspects is human rights based approach. It is about human rights and equality, and we are following, uh, doing everything not to leave any child, uh, child behind, and that uh, we are bearers of UNESCO's um, slogan that every child matters, uh, uh, or every learner matters, and um, so uh, every child is different and uh, is uh, matters to be equally treated in education. So uh, the next steps, uh, just shortly, it is vocational education sector. It's another step that we have to go and we need a lot of to learn. And I expected to learn a lot of also uh, during Zero Project Conference about universal design for learning, because it's already another sector, very difficult sector when the person wants to already uh, start his uh, first steps for dignified and independent life. And in this respect, of course, we do not have too much success. This is our next steps. And uh, you can read Tanya's story and uh, that is the last sentence. Please read, it's a child with Down syndrome and that uh, supporting the child to learn, succeed and e enjoy enjoy the sense of belongingness in the classroom is the major uh, reward of our work. And this is what this young lady experiences in Armenia. Uh, thank you, yes, Susanna. Thank you. thank you so much. Uh, uh, definitely empowering teachers and parents and creating partnerships are the key success for any project in this field. So thank you so much. Uh, we'll move to Austria now. And uh, let's listen to Elizabeth and Martin from Anger Gasse School. Hello, everybody. It is a pleasure to speak to you today. My name is Elizabeth. I'm a teacher at a school here in Vienna, Austria, called SZU Unger Gasse. We are a vocational school with a technical and commercial department. Hello from me as well. I'm Martin and I'm a student at the school called SC2 Ungergasse. Our school center provides future-oriented and practice-oriented education and has a focus on integration and equal opportunities for everybody. We specialize in technical and business subjects for students aged 14 to 19. The SC2 follows a reverse integration policy when admitting new students. This means that young people with physical and sensory disabilities are admitted first. Only when this process is complete are the classes then filled with other students. This ensures that our starting point is the needs for our students with disabilities. We provide our students with disabilities with the necessary support to participate in the lessons, such as free assistive devices and support teachers. The school provides barrier-free architecture and boarding facilities. The school has about 1,150 students, 140 teachers, therapists and social pedagogues, boarding house staff, and it has constantly grown since it was first established. The reverse integration policy targets a 20% plus proportion of pupils with special needs. As the De Ungergasse embraces a multicultural community of 34 nationalities and 13 religions. All students are taught according to the Austrian national curriculum, but students with addi uh, additional needs are provided with assistive personnel and technical support, as well as individual tutoring if required. When required, students, are uh, students with disabilities are granted extended time for exams. Additional activities such as special language programs and sports weeks, as well as services such as physiotherapy and wheelchair sports, ensure integration into the regular school life at the school. We have smaller class sizes than usual in Austria. Special sports equipment and, individual, and offer individual tutoring for students with special needs if required. Our additional facilities include, for example, an accessibility system for viewing whiteboards and FM hearing loop systems. 
you see a simple cartoon illustration showing the meaning of the words innovative with a plant. The whole school model is designed for integrative education. The reverse integration policy described above, the high proportion of students with special needs, target of 20% plus, support teachers, barrier-free architecture, for example, ramps, extra wide hallways, etc., and the boarding house to allow young people from other regions to go to the school. We do not know of any other school like this in the EU. A high proportion of students with special needs have success in the job market as we prepare them for the real world. The students without disabilities develop a lot of important social skills by taking part in the integrative processes and being part of the solutions to problems that arise. For example, through our peer meditation programs. Peer meditation is an extracurricular activity. Parents have access to high quality, high quality integrative education for the children that would not be available anywhere else. You see a minimalistic black and white illustration of an Olympic style K1 sprint kayak. The image is in 2D showcasing a side view of the sleek and streamlined racing kayak. Now a little bit more about me. I'm one of 360 students with disabilities at our school. Every day I get to go to school and work towards graduating in my dream subject, IT networking, while receiving supports, support towards achieving my dream. All, all my teachers give me a lot of moral support as well as academic help. I benefit a lot from the school's infrastructure, from the accessible corridors, lifts at every staircase, ramps outside to avoid stairs, to the therapy wing of our school where I can do my swimming practice and I can get physiotherapy on site. I am now in my final years of school and less than a year before the Paralympics in Paris. I can only say that I will miss this school with all my heart and I will always be grateful for, for the amazing opportunities I have been given. Maybe you'll see me on TV in Paris. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the front view of our school from Ungargasse. The school is funded by the Austrian state like any other state school. Replicating our model would be possible elsewhere, perhaps on a different scale, but it requires the necessary political will. Up to now, our model has not yet been replicated, especially not in the secondary sector as a technical and business school. The challenge faced by the school is to provide an education that is as integrative as possible, while taking into account real world practical and financial considerations. We involve our students with disabilities through our adaptive educational approach. This comprises regular consultation with our students with disabilities to take into account their needs, recognizing that the students are the experts and that this is work in progress. You see a glass sphere on a stand depicting a bright future with a diverse group of people inside, including a person in a wheelchair surrounded by flowers, trees and happiness. The school aims to implement and evaluate technological innovations, for example, students' digital devices and systems, increase technical support and expand physical education opportunities. The school supports the independence of people with, with disabilities and helps them to lead self-determined lives. Our approach to education emphasizes social skills, resilience and empathy. Students without disabilities learn to appreciate the challenges that people with disabilities face. The SZU embraces a multicultural community of, as said, 34 nationalities and 13 religions. So integration is just one aspect of our extremely diverse school community. We all live and learn together by embracing the diversity in the world. The SDU spirit can always be felt, both in the respect and in the appreciation between students, as well as between students and teachers. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone.
Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for raising uh, the word multidisciplinary. So working, if you want to have an inclusive school, it's very important to work with a multidisciplinary team in order to make sure that we are meeting the needs of uh, children with uh, disabilities. So thank you so much. Uh, we'll move now to Victor from Instituto Clemente from Brazil. OK, the, the best, please. training it's okay i learn it <laughs> okay uh, my name is victor uh, i'm from brazil i represent the instituto jo clemente jo clemente institute it's a black pleasure it's a big pleasure to be here to share our experience for for you uh, i learned a lot in the last days but um, uh, i have my my description i am white man I wear a glass, I, I wear in the loose blazer. I believe it, it's good. Uh, so, before to start in the specific subject is including, inclusive education, uh, I will talk about the Instituto Jo Clemente because uh, we are, uh, it's a, I think it's a, a big, a big uh, institute because we have more than uh, I think 20, 20,000 attendants per month. Uh, we are in the Sao Paulo city. The, the, the Sao Paulo city have more than 12 million people. It's a big challenge, but it's good to have a, a good uh, opportunity. Uh, the Instituto Jo Clemente is a number of non-governmental organization that has promoted health and the quality of life for people with intellectual disabilities autism spectrum disorder and hearing disease. We have an addiction to support in their social inclusion and defense of their rights, the specific services, the advocacy service, promoting knowledge through scientific research for the over 62 years. But it's, it's more important, I think, is the four pillar. We have four pillar. And the first pillar is the health promotion prevention we have the specific in, um, health, for example, in childhood, we developed the stimulation for the, the children. We have the specific laboratory where to, to have analysis and exams, uh, where uh, we can, to the people with disability, have the discover have the, the intellectual disability or not. But in the second pillar, is the is the spirit the inclusion the social inclusion we have the education in specific in the specific services to to put help the people with disability including the labor market uh, we use nowadays and the support employment methodology i think it's uh it's it's now it's you know the main part of the world and the third service we, have the, we we do the support for the people with disability for to to specific advocacy and the and the rights and the last topic we promote together with the university sao paulo of the other parts in the brazil the results and then to share the information for the society i think it's very very important because and sometimes i i feel me uh, we close in, in the, our universe the, the inclusion, <laughs> but the society is very important to participate in the process. So, uh, our job is the support to facilitate in learning, but it's very common in Brazilian society the people to confuse the specialized educational with the extra class or extra tutoring, but the service is not only it. Uh, specialized education system, uh, the work carried out aims to enable the cross country of special education actions in regular teaching, promoting the development of didactic and pedagogical research that eliminated barriers in the teaching and the learning process. I think the, that eliminated barriers is the core of our process because I don't know together to think uh, what is the, the barriers? It's necessary 
to listen the people with disability and their families and other actors participate in the process. And the second moment is the support in the classroom. In the classroom, uh, we promote sessions in, in rooms adequately equipped, equipped with the educational materials, for example, uh, math, reason, games, sensory simulations, music instruments and toys for children, oral and writing language games, and assistive technological resources. We will also adapt and produce didactic materials and pedagogical resources. And the, the last topic is important. And the first and the second moment, we have together with the teachers. But next, the idea is the teacher absorbing the knowledge it did alone in the process. But in third more moment is the support and training for teacher. We support enough teachers and schools. Activities are development with accessible pedagogical strategy and resources, which take place in, through record training sessions on the inclusive education topics, for example. These are made available and assistment on the Instituto Jo Clemente website with the aim of making it easier for students to remove barriers based on the needs present by schools. We use digital platforms to facilitate meetings with the aim of discussing student case per week in the specific school and the specific students. But uh, I think uh, as the, the innovation more than one decade uh, learning with the process is the, the, the connection, the connection, the different cir circles don't happen alone. It's necessary to promote uh, channels to connect us uh, between, for example, and the family in the school. In Brazil, it's more common, for example, the the children uh, start they started their they studies uh, before they complete one year. It's very common. So in family, the the student received specific values specific principles and, and the other informations. Uh, arrived in the school, the school don't know uh, what, what is, is the values, what is the, the principle, because in many times in Brazil, uh, the school uh, is occupied with the pedagogical resource, but our job is to promote the connection in different circles and the family, with the, the school and the other community spaces to attend the people with disabilities and the government, because without specific laws, for example, don't exist. And the, 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 there is as a good intention, but no practice. But it, it, is, it is in Brazil. OK. The impact in a success factor, the special education service. We started the service. Oh, we have an, uh, third preschool children, third students. But currently, we assist more than 300 uh, children and the teen teenagers and the adolescents. It's important to, to continue. Uh, we have the process to build the projects of life, for example, together. The, the families, the people with disabilities. Uh, it's not good uh, in Brazil because they finish the elementary school, for example, the children has 13 or 14 years. It don't, uh, don't see the possible future. Uh, it's not good because it's necessary to continue the circles. The circles do not finish in the school. It's continuing the labor markets or in the other possibilities for the people with disabilities. Uh, I think uh, everyone have a right to dream, including the people with disabilities. Oh, the, the, <laughs> the, the life of the people with disabilities not uh, resume, not finish in the school or the health uh, service, for example. It's necessary to listen. OK. Ah, okay. Uh, the, but is the I think is the is the quantitative data, but it's important the qualitative data. Okay, one minute. <laughs> Thank you. 
the qualitative data is, is um, to to help the the spaces to change of the culture, because uh, I think it's it's more important um, indicating we have. Okay, and uh, our idea in the next steps is to to expand our service for the other parts of the São Paulo, because São Paulo city is it's a big city, but the São Paulo state have more than 40 million people. <laughs> it's a, a big opportunity, but we, we have to share our experiences in other parts of Brazil and the Latin America, maybe. The finish, uh, I would like to, to leave in the, the reflection is a guide, our service. The reflection is the education for all. Well. Education is a right for all individuals, including those who need support the most. We are responsible for building a way to activate. We believe in, in, in the social model to attend the people with disabilities. Thank you so much. Thank you, Victor. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll move now to uh, Mauricio and Carmen, Adisa and CBM's Inclusive Education Program from Guatemala. The floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, I will introduce myself. I'm Carmen Lucia Guerrero from Guatemala. I am a very Latin woman <laughs> and I'm wearing glasses and a white uh, blouse with some light colors. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to present our project. Uh, we are coming from Guatemala. My name is Mauricio and I am a Latin American man. I'm very tall. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm, I'm like a um, uh, Latin American. Uh, I'm wearing glasses and uh, a blue um, blazer. Thank you. So we will start uh, introducing some of uh, our organizations. CBM is an international Christian development organization committed to improve the quality of life of persons with disabilities in the poorest communities of the world. And Adisa as well is an organization implementing activities since 25 years in a rural Mayan area and communities from Guatemala. The aim of Adisa is to empower people with disabilities, their families and their communities so they can live in a fulfilled their rights. Adisa also is implementing activities with community-based inclusive development and human rights approach. Anisa and CBM has been working for more than 18 years together to uh, improve the life of people with disability in rural areas in Guatemala. The project uh, is to promote inclusive education in Guatemala through the development of the Universal Design for Learning. It has been found for the 75% of the German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development and the 25% by CBM. The implementation partners, it is Adisa and other local partners in Guatemala. And uh, the locations has been working in Sololaque, Saltenango, Chiquimula in Guatemala. There are different areas in Guatemala and they are working with the Ministry of Education and some programs. The volume has been uh, 16,000 uh, euros, 600,000 euros. And the objective, the main objective is to achieve the inclusion of children with disabilities and other learning challenges in education system on their equity opportunities and conditions so they can fulfill, participate and exercise their rights to education. Some of the essence of the project has been uh, looking at the situation on the ground, children with disabilities and learning challenges and their specific learning needs often face barriers in accessing to inclusive education and quality informal education because of the several limitations of their education system in rural areas main, mainly. So the project looks to promote inclusive education using the principles of the UDL, the Universal Design for Learning, and the program supports students with and without disabilities in preschool and elementary school in the Mayan communities of five districts in Guatemala. What are the innovation aspects? 
first, the goal is to embed the UDL principles within the country's educational practice by running this pilot project. The UDL also was implemented in the Mayan communities of five districts in Guatemala to support the students in preschool and elementary school who face barriers to learning whether this is explicitly due to disability and to other factors. Technical assistants were trained to support the students, teachers, and parents. Three resources centers were equipped and appropriate digital media. A network of educators was created to mentorship and share experience and resources to other teachers and staff of the education ministry programs. And the impact of the universal design for learning in this project has addressed a cultural diversity, economic, geographic, and attitudinal barriers. These barriers have been addressed from the concepts of accessibility, flexibility, respect for cultures and languages, and community participation. Teachers are very prepared to meet diverse learning needs and their experience of professional growth. The flexibility of the UDL fosters students' autonomy and self-regulation skills, and also the impact has translated into more equitable and relevant education that empowers students to face and global challenges and promotes inclusion. Thank you. The success factors, you can see and the slide the numbers, but I would like to, to talk about uh, lives and children and people. So uh, when we are saying the children are not uh, integrated, but included in the schools and the after schools life. So we are very happy to see children uh, participate in the community with other children without disability. We love to see that they are learning, they are playing together at the community and in the schools. So we have created a tool to assess some barriers in schools that they are implementing. And as a result, there are, we are seeing um, accessibility, knowledge, and behavior. So we are changing mindsets in the community. And when we say the community, we are talking about people with disabilities, their families, and teachers, uh, authorities, and the civil society. Children are having different ways to, to learn, so they can play, they can sing, they can have art, and they can choose their interest to learn uh, in their school. Also, in inclusive education on wheels, we have a very old car equipped with uh, screens, tablets, and other technology. So the children have the opportunity in these Mayan rural uh, communities to know the technology. They don't have uh, TVs, they don't have anything there, but now they have the opportunity to see the technology there. Um, also, we are um, working in, with uh, communities and communities areas where mm, children not enrolled in the schools are participating there. So working children are also participating, learning with children with disabilities and with other children. So um, then we we like to say about the parents that like uh, Shantesni and Eva from CBM said yesterday, parents are key to, um, to ensure inclusion. So we are working very hard with parents uh, of the stage of the grief. So many of them are in, in the denial and anger and bargaining and depression stage, but we are working very hard for the acceptance. Many of them are not accepting uh, the disability and their family and the community. So we are putting a lot of efforts to accept their children, their own children and the family and, and for the community. Also, we are working on the resilience uh, and, the, and the, the selves, the, the self-esteem, self-value, um, the human rights. We're working also on human rights. Uh, parents are know the disability and inclusion now. They know the diagnosis of the children. They know the opportunities for the children so they can be prepared to support their children. Uh, we are also sharing with the community the responsibility for the children with disabilities. We are working with teachers. We are working with um, uh, uh, all the social 
people so they also can respect and they can have a responsibility to uh, children. Can you go please? I'm sorry. Uh, here is uh, one story, one a life story from Paula. She is a mother of children with disabilities. She was living as the rest of the children and the families in a very poor uh, conditions. Uh, she was living in the violence. And she is saying that, that the, this project gave you the opportunity to participate in the literacy for other mothers. So she is very happy and she is uh, improving her life. And her uh, family. There are a lot of lesson learned. I don't have, um, I have less than a minute, <laughs> but a uh, challenge, I have to say that it is a big challenge for funding. And the second challenge is how to implement activities with 23 different Mayan languages and different uh, cultural issues. So it is very, very complicated when we work in five districts with five different Mayan languages and a different kind to see the culture issues and the life. And at the end, uh, we're going to sustainability. We are making a lot of advocacy work, a lot of awareness with the national authorities, with ministries. Now the local governments are involved in the project. They are also uh, supporting some activities and we are trying to create sustainability in those communities. And at the end, this is uh, a story from a teacher. She is from a sixth grade teacher. And she said that the, the UDL has changed the way to see uh, the learning process. She is adopted now. She is visiting other schools and other communities. She's walking around communities to share the, uh, her knowledge and to share her experience with other schools. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. A very important factor you mentioned is the acceptance uh, and really acceptance is a very critical point we have to take into consideration when we work with the uh, uh, people with disabilities and we should start empowering parents uh, who are the first people to deal and to work with their uh, kids. Uh, inclusion in education is not just a moral imperative, it's also a fundamental human right. By embarrassing diversity, fostering social cohesion, enhancing learning outcomes, developing life skills, preparing for a diverse society, and promoting equity and social justice. Inclusive education uh, lays the foundation for a more inclusive, equitable, and prosperous future for all. Thank you for your amazing presentations. Uh, we'll now open the floor for questions. So if you have a question, let's start with uh, mention, please, your name, organization you come from and to whom you address your question. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your uh, innovative and motivating presentations. But I would uh, my name is Sean Tesney. I'm with uh, CBM uh, in, um, uh, and you've heard a little about the, the project this afternoon. I just wanted to ask uh, Carmen and particularly Mauricio, um, if you could say a little bit more about the actual training for the teachers. We know UDL, that people talk about UDL, just like we, you know, universal design for learning, just like we, we used to talk about inclusive education, but there are many not always understood. And I think the, the essence of the success for, UD, for UDL in the project is that um, focus on training. Could you say a little bit more about that and how, how that has progressed and what input you have provided over the, the project? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. Yeah, we are working with teachers. We have um, we are having workshops with them. We are having trainings with them. So we are creating tools like uh, guides to implement to planning uh, classes using the, the model. Uh, we also are giving some accompaniment to build materials. Uh, we're using materials from the community like uh, the trash, uh, leaves from the trees. So many many materials from the from the um, community so they can use those materials also we are searching and the community uh, other resources like there there is a woman singing in one community so she is coming to school to sing uh, for for the children so they can learn by by the music so we are trying to implement uh, in six uh, schools we we saying model schools because all the teachers in those schools are preparing 
classes are implementing classes and they are uh, monitoring classes with the with the model so they can share the experience with the other schools and the same communities and the other uh, rural communities thank you another question yes please hello my name is phil betzlinger from austria from you you got it we enable language learning while watching tv using interactive subtitles and therefore enabling participation uh, in the public discourse. Uh, and I would like to address my question to Sam. I think, I hope I read this correctly from this distance here. You have confessed earlier you're dyeing your hair to look younger. I'm not wearing glasses for the same reason. No, <laughs> it's a small joke. Um, my, my question is uh, regarding your presentation because you were showing uh, pictures or images from your um, activities you have. And I was um, asking myself because you there was these two pictures, the female pupils sewing in a separate room and the male pupils uh, working on mechanics. Is this something that you it appears that you have a very traditional approach in terms of uh, societal roles? Could you maybe comment on that a bit? Because we're talking about equality, we're talking about empowerment, and this is something I found as a European uh, quite strange, I would say so. Thank you very much for the very good question. Uh, I try my way to answer to understand your 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 question. Um, yeah, in our vocational training uh, center, we have a series of uh, training for the use with disability and the use of person with disability. Uh, we have showing machine for uh, young lady uh, uh, with disabilities um, from our province as well as other uh, province nearby. And we support them accommodation, we support them transportation. And at the last of the training, <coughs> when they complete the, uh, the course, we also uh, we provide a job coach for uh, them as well by uh, placing them in a uh, local private uh, business or other company that uh, pre it for their skills. Yeah. I may not answer your question, no. No, not really. For me, the question was, uh, are you separating the people in terms of their, like, uh, sex and gender? Because there was this picture, women sewing, but only women uh, at their sewing machines are being taught to sew. Yeah. And male students are taught on mechanics, mm -hmm. on mechanical work. Yeah. Is there anything that men also learn how to sew and the other way around? I got it. Yeah. Um, there are choice to be trained. If they're interested, we don't uh, classify or don't care whether uh, use with this VT female or male, if they're interested in showing, we uh, welcome both uh, sex, both female and, uh, and male. Also, uh, motor repair or mechanic repairing, we also welcome uh, both uh, uh, gender as well. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, but time is over for the session. So, but we definitely have time outside the room if you would to at last. For order. Do you have a minute? Maybe. Kind of. Okay. Okay. Hi. I have a question for all of you. First of all, my name is Yael Josephsberg. I'm from Israel, from uh, Ala Spectrum. Uh, I'm a mother of an autistic child. He's 19 years old. And he was uh, observed in his first year, one year, uh, low function. I believe in inclusive, by the way. It's a very strong word, and I believe in it with all of my heart. And I want to say uh, thank you, Susanna, for your wise words. I believe in each and every sentence. But when you are all of you talking about inclusive, I want to ask if you are meaning the high function only or the low function also, because it has to be suitable for each and every student. So the question is actually for all of you and for you, Susanna, I want to say something. You have a sentence, a great one to finish. 
every child is matter. I want to suggest another sentence for you. Every child can reach. So I will be happy to hear your answers, please. Uh, I'm really sorry, but the session is over now, but definitely we can have a very fruitful conversation outside the room. So thank you to our speakers, attendees and organizers for contributing to this enriching uh, experience. Thank you so much.